actually like it's a bit of a, like an A meeting. I don't know most of you, so it's like, hi, my name is PJ. Um, that was a nice start. Um, so uh, I'm from Ireland. Um, this is my second camp. First uh, camp was in Iceland last year. Um, I was one of you. Now I'm better. Um, I'm, I'm on this side. Uh, but uh, I'm a black belt for a year. Thanks very much. <laughs> uh, in my head, I was like, pause for clap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, so yeah, I got a, uh, my black belt in December, and I've been faking this ever since. And I'm here, so it's working. Um, I, uh, first thing I'm going to ask is, uh, when I put down river dance, did you know what I meant by river dance? Yes. Hands up those of you who know my reference. Okay, I put on river dance because it's what we call it in my club. But I assumed nobody would vote for it because they didn't know what river dance was. That's why I put it down. Then you voted for it. Now I have to do it. <laughs> I would prefer the other four options, but here we are. Um, river dance is, is just basically good footwork. Okay, and um, that's kind of, uh, I'm a small guy. I've got big man envy. And um, for my white belts, blue belts, purple belts years, I, uh, I, didn't have the massive physique that you see today, um, so it was all footwork, and it, it, it was timing and opportunity meets together in a bit of Irish luck, and suddenly I was getting past the guard. Um, I think right now, um, we kind of talk about lazy, laziness of the falling to our back, we're seeing a lot more of this, you know, guys are pulling up the legs, and there's a lot of wrestling up, and I think it's part of the new game, and I, I, I applaud it. It's hard to get past a guy here because we want him here first. And that's kind of like a, it's a poor adaptation and a lot of people don't know what to do when a guy's staying up. So it looks easier to put a guy's legs instead of This is Peter Mike, his assistant, my dance partner for today. And Woo, Peter. That's this guy. <laughs> and so like the days of you know, grabbing a guy's legs, putting him onto his back, and then passing, you know, it's kind of starting to end, I think. Like, simple little tricks where a guy comes in, you grabs your ankles, you just hold in the back of his leg, or back of his arms. That negates his lift. Lift. It just negates. He actually ends up throwing himself forward. And um, also, like, good posture, my head, over my hips, his hands come into the plate. And I can have my wrestle ups. So, kind of having to deal and address with this kind of Type of jiu jitsu is kind of being more, more uh, prevalent as well. So if I just swap it around. Um, I suppose when you're, when you're uh, approaching an um, upright guard or sitting guard, there's a couple of things I want to just address as well. So if your training partner is there, um, there's the classic style when you have on one, yeah, one side in, posting on your hand and stuff like that. So there are kind of different things in different situations you have to deal with. Um, I can't deal with all of them, but I'm going to show a little bit from each and we'll see where we go. And like I said, I'm gonna show probably a lot of techniques, talk very little, because then you'll figure me out. You'll find out I've been faking it, but. And so yeah, uh, if you're approaching and you're training, or your, your, your dance partner, your head is high, expect to get blasted. Okay, if your head is in an upright position, you're giving me access to that. If his head is quite low, you're looking for a snap down, you have to watch out for that. So you got to get it just right. So it's kind of like two bears, you know, that is too big, that is too small, just right. So a lot of time when I'm approaching my opponents, my dance partner, I want to make sure my posture is good and I'm pretty much looking into their eyes. Okay, we can patty cake. But I'm, I'm here, this is my, my position. And when I'm dealing with this, my lead leg, anytime I'm doing any twisting motion, I always twist out. Out of, out of the lead leg position. So let's say if I'm, I'm moving them, obviously I want to move them this way. Because if I'm moving them into this, suddenly I get the hooks. So that's kind of a big part of the game. And the first thing I'm, I'm, I'm going to do probably is the, the pin is kind of one of the easiest ones. So when I step in, I'm in that just right position, and I'm just going to post, or sorry, pin his leg to the floor. Okay, stay to the floor. So it, this is a reverse grip, come down. So reverse grip, come down. And then with a bit of good footwork, I'm going to flare out to the side. On my toes, all my way through my hands. Now I can't stay here all day, okay? I can't just like pin and just go, jeez, that guy, that poor guy that Chris was working on, jeez, that was terrible. You know, was, do we need to call somebody or anything like that? So I can't stay here all day. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to blast past his knee. 
So quite often you'll see a guy posting because he's starting to turn in, but his upper body's rotating, but his lower body isn't. So this is what I'm looking for. My head is going to drive to the shoulder. My hand is going to go for that exposed gap between his arm and his hip. Once I'm here, I'm driving the chip. So I'm getting past the knee, and it's not going to his back. So I'm down in just right position. Thumb down, footwork out to the side. Now you can keep his hand in and try and frame, but it's not really going to work because he's got no post. So quite often they'll post and maybe frame with this hand, but my head should beat that. My outside hand works for the underhook. Right. And I fill the gaps in behind. So straightforward enough. Okay. Things that you might have to worry about. So switch it. Not that I have the bad side, because I'm a black belt. <laughs> and so when I pin and come to here and he pulls, yeah, he might skip around, so I might have to do an adjustment. As I shoot the hand in, he can switch to an opposite pose. He might switch to maybe elbow down. Boom. That's him trying to combat my, my angle. And this is why we go here, grab the wrist, tuck it in, and finish it off. So grab that last one again. So I'm approaching my opponent. I'm rotating to the clean side. Reverse grip, thumb down. Rotate out, pins the, the leg. Underhook, head, hits the shoulder. Boom, put it in. He's forcing the elbow, reach the wrist. Pull in. And um, you can pull the, the arm all the way through and flatten them out. I don't. Personally, I kind of like it tucked in here because I like access to his hand. You know the deadlift armbar? No, nope. I didn't want to teach you, but we just show it to you. This is my option. So from here, step up. But it's up to you which, which way you want to take it. Okay. So you can either take the arm all in itself, flatten it out, start going for the back, or keep the arm in and maybe go for attack off that. So one last time. Head position is good. I'm circling to the, uh, to the lead leg, reverse pan, thumb down, circle out, hand shoots, head shoots, boom, now I'm done. We good? All right, sorry, one, two, three. So, it's like people are more interested in the deadlift armbar than they are. <laughs> Something very, you know, masculine or whatever, or alpha about it. Okay, so, yeah. And that's kind of one of the first passes. That I, that I did as a, as a white belt blue belt. I still catch people with it today. And again, it's a good one. The other one, uh, again, uh, as I said, the rotation. If my lead leg is here, my rotation is always towards my lead leg. If I'm rotating him, it's away from my lead leg. So let's say, for instance, a uh, standard pass. We are pushing him onto that pivot point. So that he's kind of like, like soft on the legs, heavy on the hip. And again, very little contact with the ground, it makes them lighter to rotate. So again, just coming in here, I can do this, or I can push. Once I'm in this position, you can see it's kind of like, it's easy to nip it. He's got great core, jeez, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from here, it's the rotation. I'm coming in, filling the gaps as we do it. Again, my ribs connecting with his armpit, my knees connecting with him. And again, I don't want to over rotate. Mm -hmm. Hand comes in, I can start playing. Go back to that lap up game as well. So, going back in. So, if your training partner, so your dance partner might figure out this, you can switch and just get to that rotation. Again, it's important that my rib or my lat connects with his arm here. I don't want that space where you can window wipe the elbow in and create problems for me. I want my Jiu Jitsu to be effective and lazy. I can clear up things afterwards. Oh. One more time. So I want him to try and get to that point, that balancing point. So a little push with the hand and a tip to the outside knee, just get that rotation. I commit to this X. I, I don't want to kind of take my arm out too early because the knee can kind of come back in and create, me, create problems for me. So 
I'm committing flat X, falling towards them, and I fill that space in between his arm and his hip. From here, lock it up, and again, nice attacks. You come off this as well. Try to see it again? All right. The big thing is getting this correct. <coughs> that makes them super easy to do. Okay. Now, if he goes to his back, it makes it easier, but I have to catch it at the right time. And again, it's opportunity meets a bit of Irish luck. It's always good. So this is our position, and I can lock it up and do my things. Come on in. Get that little push. Get them light, and then rotate. It's just finding that right timing to fill the space. He needs to come into that sweet spot. The armpit, uh, the space between his armpit and his hip is owned by me. It's no longer his, this is my way to sit. Built my house, it's here now, okay? And again, I've got isolated with the arm, triangles, lots of options. We give it a go. One, two, three. So, um, just, we're obviously dealing with perfect, uh, perfect scenarios here where I'm getting that axis clean, the hand is up and it's like it's Christmas all over again. Um, so when I push and I come in, that's what I want. If he tucks the elbow in, I'm still doing the same thing, but I kind of want to make sure that I, that I have the control of the bottom elbow. So I might cut the bottom elbow and bring it up to me, because obviously he wants to run away. But the reality of this is this is quite good for back ticks, because he's after giving me a hip wrap. So now I have a back take anyway. But the great thing about this back take is life gets very uncomfortable for him. And I've got great isolation off as well. So just be wary that if he, he doesn't give you that present, there's still a present later on. Okay, so again, just pushing, rotate. Again, I want to make sure I cop the elbow. He doesn't get access to that rolling out position. And quite often, the arms folded in front of me. I'll catch. And I kind of like scissoring them and making life very difficult. If you really want to make it difficult, I pull up the elbow and I drop my elbow. So sorry, now up here. Right. Okay, don't go on now until the people I was doing this fell up. <coughs> That's my position. So, um, I was going to do like a far armbar series where this, this is almost armbar. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, just getting to that, cupping the elbow, blocking the uh, wrist between my shoulder and my ear and then dropping my elbow onto his ribs, because I'm a nice guy. That's it. Okay. So if it doesn't land in that sweet spot, just know that the gift wrap is probably going to be there as well. Is that fair enough? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Um, okay. We're starting to ask questions about the river dance. River dance is uh, traditional Irish dance. We start off. It's just simple and straightforward. Go forward. Okay. Do I have any volunteers? <laughs> you got the four. I saw you. I've seen your four. <laughs> no? Okay, so river dance. Faces. Okay? Four. One, two, three, one, two, three. So, a lot of what we're going to be doing is kind of that good footwork. So, I'm going to take my first river dance pose. I step in. Okay? I can switch, rotate around, catch, come around. But again, it's just about clearing the, the knee and making sure my rotation of my foot is good. So, we're going to do this first one. Again, I'm here. I want access to his arm and his hip. I can do this in two ways. I can create it, or I can get him to grab my wrist and pull the arm and create it anyway. So it's two basic ways. He's tight, but he has to engage with me. I can grab his wrist, pull, create the space between his arm and his hip, or I can make him think that he's Gripping me, we're getting a dominant grip, and then I step in. So we're going to bring our knee up. I'm sorry, we're going to bring our foot up to our knee, and we're just going to work to the outside. When I finish here, I want my toes pointed towards him, and I want my knee to pointed towards his inside chest. Okay. The reason for this is because if my leg is here, he's going to wrestle up on me, and like if we're flashing, he can go amapada. But again, that's making it a little bit more difficult for him. He still might be able to, if he's flexible, work the leg inside, and then he go 50-50. So I need to get his legs away from me. So from here, catch, head control, step. Two feet out, I'm gonna get his legs away from me by pushing around the pole. 
and, and drop him inside sweet spot. So his legs are further away. Now Peter's a couple of weight divisions above me, but it's an easy rotation. Because again, it's the same principle of pushing him here and rotating. It's the same thing, but now you're just using the pull to use my leg to do. So from here, bring my foot to my knee. Step. Again, knee pointing towards his ribs, towards his chest. Head control, I pull and pull, sorry, pull with the hand, push with the head, hit the rotation base, and I'm past the guard. Okay? It's stupidly easy. Um, uh, again, I, 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 I won a lot of tournaments against better guys just by getting that first two points or that pass just by into here. So, this control, it access to here, foot up, in, and again, knee pointing. Don't have your foot here, but you can see how he's hovering, just like the first one. He's hovering on his hips, knee as head off the ground, feet off the ground. And all I do is I pull him around. And I get it. You good? Yeah. Happy enough? Yeah. Maybe he's in so I can get over My grip, is it? Oh, no, no, not particularly. I got fragile. Like, like, I'm a school teacher, I need my fingers for <laughs> typing. So. Uh, no, I, I kind of prefer wrist control. Uh, if I'm most of my hand fighting, if I was hand fighting, I do like that. I do like grabbing the fingers themselves. The reason for it is sometimes when you grab the wrist, there's a rotation. Here, the rotation happens, but the wrist is not effectively breaking the grip. The only thing I, I, I don't really like pulling around this way. So I like the, the, the big, you know, the, the knot at the, the end of the rope is easier to pull rather than the slack of the rope. You pull down just that for that reason. So again, switch my stance. Again, hand control, control. Step, go to your And then you get your pass. Okay, let's give it a go. One, two, three. Right. Yeah, you can say that, but I'm a slow guy. So I can just have an axe. Okay, so I'm just going to go over one, yeah. How do you do it if the opponent has like a staggered sit down with the car? Then I, yeah, so if he's like this, like this, and I'm going to pick his ankle and do the first one. Okay. And so. Right now, I'm, I'm just going from the stationary. He's not doing anything, I'm going one, two. But the reality of it is, uh, I, my opponent is always going to square his hips. They're always going to do that. So my, my stable one, I can be here. If I do this, you know, it, it's, it might be too, too obvious. So I just might do this. Boom, and I'm looking for, I'm looking for his foot. So as I circle, then I go for it. So then it's a secondary reaction to his face. Uh, for this one here, like sometimes the danger is he hooks my leg. Yeah, so just even here. He just hooks the leg and causes problems, then I have to do a little bit more footwork and then come out through. But it's still there. I've done it, uh, so, uh, one of the, the, the ladies was the ballerina one, and she said uh, it's a hook a hole through the through the gap. And I, I'm not a big fan of it because it's hard sometimes to get through in the knee blocks the access to that hole. So I kind of prefer the knee out, you can see if it's going around, and it, it's that quick motion, that will take it. That would be my preferred option. And uh, other things is when they grab the legs. So this is our next phase. So a lot of this is like quick timing. Uh, so let's say if they grab the legs, so he grabs the leg. If his head's on the outside, you take it back. You all see this one? Okay, all right, just, I'll, I'll, I'll just okay. So I'm in here, I step in, and he grabs. Now I can make him grab the wrong hand by holding his right hand. Or sorry, the correct hand. So I can be like this, holding, step in, he grabs. Now I take this back. Big long step, lower my, uh, my posture, and I want to go chest to back as quickly as possible. And the great thing about it is I still kind of control the space between his arm and his hip by doing this. Okay, so it's giving me access to that underhook and I get my seatbelt and I can start to open. Just hold it a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, I'm here, we're hand fighting, I get my, my grip, set bang, he hooks, he made the mistake, his head is on the outside. I'm going to do a long step out, 
I'm gonna get my chest as low as possible. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to gather up his elbow. If I'm high, I gather up his shoulder, which is pretty good if you wanna do a choke or a triangle choke. So from here, I'm nice and low. I'm underhooking, I switch, open, go for that choking option, throw the leg in. I'm already set for the choke. Okay. So we're gonna set it up. We're hand fighting, I'm gonna grab the opposite hand, so if I'm stepping in, I'm controlling my left hand, I'm stepping with my left leg. I'm gonna rotate around, I'm gonna keep that armpit open. Chest to back, don't be high. If I'm high, there's a tendency for the leg to slip over the crook of the elbow and find the shoulder, which is not bad, but you need to grab your ankle pretty quick. So we can go for a reverse triangle. But I prefer taking the back. So. Catch, step, he grabs, rotate, chest to back. I'm opening up the armpit. I'm swapping out on one movement. As I'm falling to the, the leg trap side, I'm looking for that choke straight away. Oh. All right. So I'm, I'm just forcing the error. Second, grab. What's it wrong? Easy. Too slow. I'm gonna do it again. But faster. <laughs> I'm not sweating. It's just a lot of beer from last night. <laughs> okay, so again, control, step. And it, it's important that I'm not coming to here. I make myself as low as possible, chest to back. Switch, switch. Foot in, take it back. And just you're taking one of his arms out. Um, when I was a hungry, eager, uh, white belt, blue belt. I was always of the mind. I saw a video on YouTube and I was like, no, but let's go and trap. That's crap. I never tried to trap. Now, if I do trap it, I'll make sure then I make it the bottom leg, never the top leg. But the beauty of this is down on the bottom side. Work it in. Easy enough. I'm just forcing him to make a, a silly beginner mistake by just grabbing his four fingers and then stepping in. So if I'm grabbing his right and my left, I'm stepping my left. Okay, that's right. One, two, three. <laughs> this is kind of a, a another kind of you no know, one, two, three step, one, two, three step, one, two, three step. Uh, if he grabs it with the correct hand. So I'm forcing him to grab it with the, the wrong hand. I take his back. Um, he should really crack, uh, uh, grab it with that, that hand. He can wrestle off, single leg, take him stand up, all that good stuff. Quite often, like you can see his weight is on this because he's ready to go. If I turn his head to this side, you can see how his head, arms are starting to come around anyway. So like, it is a foolish thing to reach for it, but like, the head's on the correct side, he's posted and putting weight and so now. That's what happens. And then I've just got access to the game. So, there's lots of different setups. I'm only just doing the technical technique. You'll come up, like, if you're drilling this, maybe today or tomorrow, whatever, and suddenly you, you'll hit a new way of getting into it. Oh, awesome. Tell me so I can bring it back and then say, I came up with this on my own, guys. <laughs> this is all me. Okay, I'm just going it. And if he, if he does it with the, the correct hand, um, like this, again, I can do my two-step Irish dancing. Uh, I want head control, hand on the knee. I'm gonna bring this foot <coughs> through this gap. But I'm not gonna lift my leg. If I lift my leg, it's not gonna happen because it's got a good connection to his shoulder and my knee. But I can bend my knee. I can do that. But I can't lift my knee up. So I'm gonna rotate at the knee and I make sure that I do my Irish dancing two-step. From here, head control. Hand control, and I'm just going to go one, two. Yeah, once I'm here, this hand is going to reach for the armpit, this hand is going to reach for underneath the leg, and I'm going to get to this position. I want his tailbone off the ground, and I want to make sure that I catch the crook of his knee with the crook of my elbow. If I grab with my hand, he's just going to kick, and he's going to break my grip. Okay, I'll see weights closer. I'm stronger, weight's away, weaker, so I'm gonna try and catch him here. The other thing I wanna do is I wanna try and keep his tailbone off the ground as well. So if he does kick, he kicks off. 
If it's down here, you can keep out. Oh, yes. That can be a problem. Okay? So that's our position. Then I can come up and start clipping. And again, I step in, maybe I, I hold the hand, he steps in, he grabs. I want head control straight away, because if he tries to rest it up, I want to be able to do stuff. And again, head control kind of dictates where he goes as well. Hand on the knee. This is for the little bit of balance. So this is helping with my balance. This is helping my balance. And that's a one, two. What I don't want is his leg to be caught. I, I can't leave a trailing. He's going to bring his leg off, and then suddenly I'm in this position. So it's got to come around quick. So it's that kind of one, two, three. Yeah? From here. And I'm down straight away. Hands underneath the armpit. Okay. Four fingers underneath the armpit. My knees pointing towards his chest. I want to underhook with the crook of my elbow. I'm going to fall onto my hip. And again, I have active toes, I'm engaged. I'm not lazy just in case he's a beast and he turns into me. If he tries to turn into me, I get nasty with my shoulder. If he tries to turn away, I cup with my hand. Okay, let's try to keep him in that sweet spot. Boom. When he's trashed round enough, okay, we call it cooking in our club. So I'm cooking him, he's got pressure, he doesn't like that. It's being cooked. He does stuff like this. And then I'm back to that space between his armpit and his hip, which is what I want. Okay. So stepping in. Head control, knee control. One, two. Catch. Active feet. It's important to get the four fingers in. Into that armpit, because this makes this better. This is cooking right now. So when he's ready, bing. I can move up. Do I do it one more time? Yeah. Okay. I step in. Again, he's doing a solid job of it. My knee's connected to his chest. I'm holding his uh, head. I'm holding his knee on the outside. side. I'm going to go to the head control side. Knee, add knee bends, not lifts. The other foot steps out. I'm already down in this range. Four fingers are in his armpit. Crook my elbow, catch his his knee. I need to count uh, inside uh, competitive uh, base, toes active, engaged. <clears throat> this is it. When I'm ready, we'll go All right, we get a one, two, three. Okay, and I think that's our time, I believe. And it's, I suppose, as I said, it's, it's about good footwork. Um, the opportunity, again, creating a space between his arm and his hip. We've all done the, you know, the crap. You know, stepping in, cross knee pass, head down, boom, out, good one. Same principle as being the uh, sitting guard. Uh, if you step in and he, he's tight with the underhook, I can bring the knee through. Pull up. Coming in, having all those options as well. There's lots of options you can do off it by stepping in, so it's kind of like, the starting movement is our dancing step. Right. And then just having the footwork. Grab the outside hand. Footwork. Walk in. Grab the outside hand. Okay. And then obviously our, our pin. He pulls his hand. Side. And the last one, again from here, shoulder, leg, sitting on that side. That's it. So, thanks very much. Appreciate you being a nice audience, a very gentle and kind audience. It's my first time, so I was a bit nervous. Very dry mouth for some reason. I don't know why, but it was probably last night. So, thank you very much for that. <laughs>